What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Toronto Maple Leafs cap situation and why a move is inevitable and what this means for the Leafs as they go closer to the NHL trade deadline, even though we're probably still a little bit far away to be completely talking about the trade deadline. But we need to talk about some implications and stuff that could lead to the NHL trade deadline with their cap. So if you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. Trying to reach a bunch of different goals here on this channel. So uh, if you want to be locked in on some news and trade rumors and, and talk and stuff like that, I've got a lot coming. Um, so definitely stay locked in. But the Toronto Maple Leafs last year, obviously being in the bubble um, and then you know, playing in the all Canadian division and stuff like that. They did really well until it got to the playoffs because it's inevitable that they, they, they just do it every time and it, and it frustrates everybody. But this year, they also look really good against teams that are not just Canadian teams. They look like they're a little bit more complete. They look a lot more built. They've got stellar goaltending. They've been getting some good defense at times because they're having some troubles there once again. But the forward group has been getting some depth scoring. It looks like they actually added some players at a good number that can provide depth. But the Toronto Maple Leafs are in a little bit more of a different situation. Last year, they called it all or nothing on Amazon, right? The Amazon series, whatever. But I don't care about an Amazon title for um, a video series, even though it was really good. That's besides the point. It wasn't all or nothing because the big changes still didn't happen after another first round loss. But I think this year is kind of the, okay, now Sheldon Keefe has had a little bit more time with this team. Okay, now Kyle Dubas has had a lot more time with this team. Brendan Shanahan, whoever else, the players the core of this team, whatever. There has to be change if the Leafs do the exact same thing at the end of the season. And I know it sounds like a broken record, but this is the season where I feel like that comes to a head. This is the season where they have to realize these problems are going to keep happening if they, in fact, lose again. Because if you look at the standings right now, the Toronto Maple Leafs are in a pretty good spot. If we look at the Atlantic Division, we're top three, okay? Okay. If you go to the wild card race, obviously a little bit more um, of a tighter race, you know, 44 points, 39 points. Um, it's a little bit tighter here. But the Toronto Maple Leafs need to figure out a way to make this team better. And looking at the cap right now, which we'll get to in a second, the Toronto Maple Leafs might need to make a move because players are coming off LTIR, the team is fully healthy. And they're healthy scratching guys that are a little bit too expensive to be healthy scratched. Of course, that being Nick Ritchie. But if you look at their cap situation right now, they have $341,000 in cap space only if they make a move that I've already made on this cap friendly page. And that's putting Pierre Engvall on waivers because that probably is the most likely player out of everybody on this roster to get waived. I don't think they want to waive Nick Ritchie just yet. But if they do that, he almost fully gets buried in the minors. He would have $125,000 that would still count against the Toronto Maple Leafs cap space. And that would be the only way that they're cap compliant. Now, the reason why this is important is because, first of all, a lot of people will look at Lilligren or Sandine and go, okay, well, you're just going to send one of those guys down. Well, no, that's that's not what's going to happen because Lilligren has been playing with Jake Muzzin in that top four a lot more than Justin Hall has as of late when the team is fully healthy. Um, of course, Lilligren's still on uh, the protocol right now, but you're not sending down Lilligren and Sandine because both of them have been really good. So you have Dermot, you have Hall, you have Muzzin, Riley, Brody, you, you've got seven defensemen, right? Biega doesn't count against the cap. Um because uh, of the, the, they have like these, all these new rules in terms of um, the Omicron rule. There's, there's so many different rules, but the, the simplest way I could put it to you guys is that the Toronto Maple Leafs need cap space and they're going to have to figure out how to make it. Case in point, like I said, they've got these seven guys here, which I don't think they want to lose any of these guys unless it's via a trade and they acquire um, a pick or something like that. Um, and then the forward group, the only guys that seem a little bit expendable here is a guy like Nick Ritchie or um, Engvall, who I've already sent to the minors. You've got Campbell and Mrazek, who are both healthy and ready to play. And um, once Lilligren comes back uh, from the uh, protocol list, then your defense looks like this. So 
what do the Toronto Maple Leafs do, especially if they don't want to put Pierre Engvall on waivers? Because Engvall's had his issues, right? Engvall hasn't been the greatest player, but he still provides the Maple Leafs in a few different areas that they can use. He can kill some penalties. He's a quick skater, but he doesn't always put it all together. But that doesn't make him a useless player. I still think Engvall is useful for this team as a depth player. So you put him on waivers, sure, you're saving the cap space if somebody claims him or if he's with the Marlies and only $125,000 of his cap space counts uh, against the cap, or sorry, his contract counts against the cap. But I don't know, is it is it worth the risk to put him on waivers? Now, the reason why I bring this up is because there have been trade rumors like I've brought up before. Are the Leafs going to trade one of Hall or Dermott? Because, of course, that would give you some space. That would give you around $2 million in cap space if you trade Justin Hall. Um, it could give you a, even a little bit more cap space if you trade Justin Hall plus put Angle on waivers. Maybe you trade both of them. Maybe the Toronto Maple Leafs do something that I think a lot of people could be expecting. And that's either trading or waiving Nick Ritchie. Now, the reason why this could be significant is because he has a $2.5 million cap hit. And I'm sure a lot of people are already complaining about this because he provides toughness and this, that, and the other. I'm really disappointed with Nick Ritchie because I think he does have stuff that the Maple Leafs need. But throughout the season so far, we've seen that he doesn't utilize his skills to the fullest potential with this team. It He's not overly physical he hasn't been at least that I've seen he hasn't provided any real depth scoring so far he hasn't fit in the top six he hasn't really fit that well in the bottom six especially when you look at his contract so the the Maple Leafs try to trade this contract and again there's going to be people in the comments I already see these comments a mile away you can't trade that contract he's terrible blah 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 well not necessarily. A lot worse contracts have been traded, um, and he's only got this year and next year on his deal. And there could be teams that value him. They might see something that the Leafs aren't unlocking, which is completely possible. It's happened many times before. But this, the fit just doesn't seem to be working. And he could be a guy that is a healthy scratch too many times to where his contract becomes a problem. Uh, Sheldon Keefe said he didn't even want to make him a healthy scratch. Um, because he's been working really hard, but that doesn't equate to ice time and being in the lineup. So he could be a guy that's on his way out. We've seen way worse contracts traded. If the Leafs have to bite on attaching a decent prospect to him just to get him out the door or even a, a draft pick or something like that, the Leafs have traded far worse contracts. Every NHL team has traded far worse contracts. There could be a solution to this that's easier than we think. Now, the other name, like I mentioned, was Pierre Engvall. $1.25 million cap hit. Um, this is a guy that I said, you know, they could send down and almost save every bit of his contract that he has left. Um, they also could just straight out trade him. I don't know what else to say about Engvall, but he just doesn't see, like I said, he doesn't put it all together. It doesn't seem like it's really working. Um, so he could be on his way out and uh, I would put him in the same group as what I mentioned in my last video, Hall. Um, and Dermot, of course, with that rumor with the Avalanche. And then Angval could be waivers, could be traded. Richie could be a guy that's traded. Do you waive him? Do you eat that contract? I don't know. But it's all up in the air for those guys. Now, the reason that this next name is very interesting is because the game that was played last night at the time I'm recording this video against the Ottawa Senators, Ilya Mikheyev looked pretty good. Uh, he was scoring a lot, a uh, couple goals for him. He had a lot of chances. He was putting the puck on net. He he had a lot of a lot of pretty damn good chances. He looked very very quick, like he usually does. And his con he's in the last year of his contract now. The reason why this is important is because he's a guy that requested a trade earlier in the season, or I believe it could have even been the off season. And I actually I think it was the off season and. It almost seemed like the Leafs were trying to find a deal. They were trying to find a way out for him. But now it looks like he he's a lot better of a fit. Does that mean the Leafs sell high on him and, and try to just get a draft pick out of him and trade him just to create some cap space? Or do they hold on to him and hope that he just wants to stick around and, and maybe you have to let him walk in the offseason? There's a lot of different possibilities, but McKayev's a guy that I'd look at and... Uh, He's, it's questionable to see where he fits on this team. 
But the Leafs are going to have to do something. A move is probably inevitable. I've been saying this for a long time in the videos. You can go back and check it out. But a move has to happen. There's a bit of a cap crunch. We'll have to see what Kyle Dubas does. Could it be a bigger trade? I doubt it. But going towards the deadline, the Leafs need to upgrade. This is the, the last shot for them, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think down below. Just a video kind of updating on the cap situation and on some rumors. If you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.